Now, if one were to talk about case law in 2009, there have been some pretty interesting cases in the first party world, and not all of them have been pro policyholder. Uh, believe it or not, there are a substantial number of times when an insurance company's reasonable position is upheld by uh, thinking uh, courts across the country. There are a fair number of times when uh, the uh, result is the other way. What I wanted to make as a general observation is that you know insurance companies, despite the bad press that sometimes they get, uh, do perform a very valuable service for uh, our economy and the way b our lives are led. And I think that sometimes uh, some persons in the press and uh, maybe the general public, although I think it's more a factor of uh, um, bad press, uh, take a very uh, jaundiced view of insurers and I think that's um, uncalled for and generally unwise. It turns out that with the economy uh, being in the doldrums, to uh, be colloquial, uh, m there's just been more and more personal and corporate bankruptcies. Uh, not only uh, straight liquidations, but reorganizations. Now, what that has meant to the uh, first party world uh, is the introduction of basically a new uh, set of uh, uh, persons who have to either review or sign off on even routine settlements. For example, uh, in the liability context, this is pretty uh, old news where bankruptcy courts were called upon to, uh, if you will, uh, consent to or so order uh, dispositions of, of uh, assets which included a liability policy. If we fast forward to the uh, what's been happening recently in the first party world, there's been uh, a, an increase of asking bankruptcy courts to agree to uh, settlements, complex settlements which may have been reached uh, after a full investigation, maybe even uh, litigation, uh, with an insured that somewhere along the line uh, fell into bankruptcy. And so, whereas before uh, it was difficult enough to have to uh, negotiate a, a transaction, negotiate a loss, uh, once one arrives at, at uh, closure via a, a settlement, uh, that you, with the payment of the settlement proceeds, and that would be the end of it. Not so in uh, bankruptcy cases, the, uh, let's just say in certain bankruptcy cases, we now are finding that we have to go to the bankruptcy court to get it uh, so ordered and approved so that uh, we do not find ourselves having to pay uh, twice. That is to say, not only to the entity that we've reached the settlement with, but uh, we wouldn't want to have to pay some bondholder who would make a claim. So the way we protect uh, ourselves and protect uh, the company, the insurers, is we, we obtain the bankruptcy court's uh, consent, and that uh, basically ends the topic. This has been uh, really something that in 2005 and 2006, uh, we were not seeing. In 2009, there's been a veritable uh, in increase. There are literally thousands of legislative proposals uh, that have been made in 2009 that affect uh, insurance. That goes from the most mundane to the most uh, esoteric uh, types of proposed uh, legislative changes. Uh, we're not here to discuss uh, the health uh, situation where uh, you know as well as I do that uh, there are big changes that have been discussed and nothing has happened. In the various alternative proposed bills that were floating out there, there were many hidden 
uh, changes that one would be surprised how they affected non-health insurers had they become law. All of this is uh, in the future. Well, we don't know whether we're going to get health care uh, legislation or not. However, there were many other types of legislative proposals which may uh, become law that have nothing to do with the health care. For example, there are uh, changes that have been proposed to the various, and, and I mean state and federal, uh, the, about how one treats uh, captive insurers. The rise of captive insurers is uh, something that is um, important not only to insurance companies but to policyholders who have uh, in the captive situation perhaps a vehicle to better manage their risks and control their costs. We've seen uh, how uh, captives have risen not only in 2009 but uh, uh, before then as a alternative mechanism to traditional insurance. Now, of course, uh, traditional insurance comes back in the context of reinsurance, and there's risk sharing in that in that manner. But for 2009, this has been a very, very uh, hot topic, near and dear to uh, uh, many of us that are in the industry, either for insurers or for for policyholders.